class. How are you doing today? I hope this week has gone well. It looks like a lot of you did very well on the exam, which I'm pretty happy about. Uh, like I said, class average was 81%, which is great. Let's keep it up. Uh, the next few weeks are going to be a little bit tougher because now you are relying solely upon uh, the online course and uh, we're, you won't be able to rely on what we did in class anymore. Um, so let me know if you are having any struggles or issues. I'm happy to do office hours over Zoom. I know I've done that with a few students and I feel like it's really helped those students. Uh, so today I'm here just, just outside of Zion National Park. Uh, what we see behind me, that's, that's Kolob Canyon. I wanted to show you this view because much like Death Valley, Kolob is the result of uplift along a normal fault. And that uplift has led to erosion and downcutting of the Navajo sandstone, which more or less gives us Kolob. Uh, this is just 20 minutes south of Cedar City, so if you get bored and need to go for a drive, go check it out. I highly recommend it. It's, it's pretty amazing. All right, so today, a couple of things I wanted to go over based off of your questions. Uh, the first thing is faulting. So I want to go over the different types of faults and the stresses that cause them. Then next, I want to talk about uh, different features within Death Valley and how they form. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to use these uh, clumsy little block diagrams to help demonstrate uh, the different types of faults and how they work. Uh, so the the stresses that cause faults are uh, tensional stress or pulling apart compressional stress or pushing together and then shear stress where one side slides past the other okay so our once again our four types of faults that we've discussed are normal faults reverse faults thrust faults and strike slip faults so I'm going to demonstrate each of those using these these blocks uh, so first off we have normal faults which are the result of tensional stresses or pulling apart these are the faults that create the basin and range topography. These are the faults that are common throughout Death Valley. Uh, these are the faults that created this feature behind me, Kolob National Park, and really all of Zion National Park. So picture me pulling apart these blocks. What's going to happen? As I slowly pull apart, the block in the middle is dropping down. Okay. Uh, tectonically, we refer to this as horses and grobbins. The horses are the ones on the outside that stick up, the mountain ranges, and the grobbins are the valleys that are in between the horses. Okay, so that that's formed by a result of normal faulting. So we can look at it like this. Uh, behind me, I have Kolob, which has uplifted, and we're more or less in a valley which has dropped down along a normal fault. Notice how this fault has a block on each side of it. The fault block that is above the fault plane and sliding down, that is the hanging wall. It's hanging above it. If I were to remove this and you were on the underside, you would be on an overhang. Okay, this is the hanging wall. This is the foot wall. If you were on top of it, you could stand on it. Your feet would be on top of it. Okay, so that's the foot wall. For a normal fault, the hanging wall moves downward. That's the motion. Okay, now let's demonstrate how reverse faults form. Reverse faults are the result of compressional stresses. So I'm going to squeeze or push together on the ends. What do you think will happen? All right, if you predicted that the middle block would move upward, you are, you are, uh, correct. Let's do that again. There we go, there we go. Okay, faults don't necessarily move like that, but. So reverse faults, due to compression, the hanging wall moves upward. It moves the opposite direction that gravity would take it. In normal faults, it's just sliding down the fault plane. 
as stretching is going on, tension is going on, it slides down. But in reverse faults, it's being pushed upward. Okay, with reverse faults, the crust is thickening. Uh, these faults are what form during the laramide orogeny. Okay? All right, next we have thrust faults. Thrust faults are the exact same as reverse faults, except for instead of a very steep angle, it would be a very shallow angle, about 30 degrees. So since my blocks don't have that angle, I can't demonstrate that for you. All right, and last we have our strike slip faults, which are the result of shear stress. For strike slip faults, there is no vertical displacement. It is all horizontal, so it moves like this. Can you see that, that block moving towards you? So it exhibits this sort of lateral offset for strike slip faults. All right, so those, those are the four main types of faults. Okay, now I want to explain how alluvial fans form. So here we have two fault blocks in Death Valley. This block is moving up, this block is moving down. What type of fault is that? This is the hanging wall. This is the foot wall. Hanging wall, hanging wall moving down, that's a normal fault. Okay, so what that does is that creates this really steep slope and then this really fat, flat, not fat, flat valley floor. So what happens is after it rains, the water will flow down this slope. As it flows down, it's flo flowing down a really steep slope. The energy is really high. You have erosion occurring along this area. So it's removing sediment, transporting sediment. Well, this water will flow until it hits the valley floor. There the energy is really, really low. It's flat, right? Uh, so the energy suddenly drops off. There's a drastic decrease in energy. So all that sediment that's being carried down the mountain front, it's going to be deposited. This uh, sedimentary system goes from erosional to depositional as it goes from the mountain front to the valley floor. And what that does is that starts to deposit and it creates this. Uh, from a profile, it looks like a, a mound or something like that from a top view because it's usually coming out of a So it's coming down this canyon and it reaches the valley. This is the valley. It creates this fan shape, okay? So this is from top view, that's from side view. Uh, so it's basically due to a drastic energy change from these fault blocks that have been uplifted, okay? All right, so next we have our Playa Lakes. So once again, this is our horse block that has been uplifted. The foot wall has been uplifted. Hanging wall has dropped down to create this valley that allows for deposition of these big mounts of sediment, alluvial fans. So we have our high energy where erosion is occurring. We have our low energy where alluvial fans are depositing. But what happens in the middle of these basins? That's where we have the lowest energy. Water can still flow off of these alluvial fans and collect along the valley floor, okay? All of the large particles or even medium and small particles have deposited out in this alluvial fan. So the only sediment left in this water is the finest grain stuff, uh, the very, very fine clay and the salt, the dissolved content. Well, since Death Valley is in an arid region, this will evaporate and you're left with salt depositing on these valley floors, making it super flat, super uniform, and that's what a
why a lake is. Okay, it's these really flat, usually dried up lake beds. They are only full of water if there has been very recent rainfall or snow melt. Okay, now let's talk about the badlands. Uh, so alluvial fans and playa lakes, those are both depositional features. The badlands, that's an erosional feature. So in this diagram, where do you think erosion is most likely to take place? Here, 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 yeah. So where the slope is steeper, that's where erosion is gonna take place, okay? That's where the alluvial fan and the playa lake, that's where they're getting their sediment from. Uh, since Death Valley is arid, since it has steep slopes, since it has very little vegetation, uh, during these heavy seasonal rainfalls, during summer thunderstorms, a lot of material can be taken away at one time. And the result of that is you get uh, these steep ridges and gullies that really have no vegetation on them. And those are called the badlands. Another factor that contributes to the badlands is the fact that the, the rock is really soft. If it were hard, it would be less erodible and it wouldn't form these beautiful slopes. It would form cliffs instead. So you need highly erodible rock, which comes from typically fine grained sediment. Um, fine grained sedimentary rock, it's less porous and it's more easily removed, making it highly erosive. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, it's, it's been kind of tough out here with all the wind that's going on. Um, I hope you can hear me. I hope that the whiteboard use made sense to you. Uh, feel free to send me a message if any of these concepts are a little bit shaky. Uh, but just in summary, uh, faults are the result of stresses causing rocks to fracture and displace. Uh, normal faults are the result of tensional stress Reverse faults and thrust faults are compressional stress, and strike-slip faults are the result of shear stress. Uh, features within Death Valley, such as alluvial fans and playa lakes, those are the result of deposition. And badlands, that's the result of really rapid rates of erosion. <laughs> okay, so I hope you have a good week. Have fun, be safe. Uh, try your best to get your mind off of anything that might be causing you stress right now. Go for a walk, um, play video games, talk to your mom on the phone, whatever it might be. All right, hope you have a good week. Bye.